Hello everyone and welcome to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Sized YouTube channel. I hope you're enjoying my YouTube channel. If you'd like me to talk about anything in particular then please let me know and if you've got any comments pop them in below. I look forward to seeing you soon. Hello everyone and welcome to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. How the devil are you? So what I thought we'd talk about today is fostering creativity and innovation in our business. When we're working by ourselves, we're solo in practice, there's nobody else around to really support us unless we have a mentor. So that's why I'm here and that's why I mentor people and I have multiple um, different ways in which you can work with me. But when we're by ourselves, you know, it might not be the right time for you to work with me. It might be you're still thinking about it. You might think, well, how can I work with Geraldine? In which case, you know, get yourself a focus call. That way we can talk. We can figure out what you need and where you are in your business right now. But let's break some of it down because we've got to foster this creativity and innovation. For me, fostering this creativity is working with other people and being in groups. But also, I have to take breaks, right? I've got to take breaks. And those breaks are different. You know, they're so fine. At my Easter, I went away. I went to New Zealand. I saw my mom. And then I went down the South Island and saw my new great niece and my niece <laughs> and other family members. And so that was wonderful. And that break really rejuvenated me. But we can't always go on holiday, unfortunately. Um, I would love to say we all could all the time. And there is, of course, that, you know, passive income thing that I talked about in Strictly Education the other day that, you know, there's really no such thing as passive income. You have to work. You're always promoting something. It might be you're doing paid ads, but at the end of the day, you're still promoting something with pass to create passive income. So to go on holiday and to be away all the time and to make sure that, you know, you're taking those breaks, we still have to schedule breaks, right? We still have to have like Sunday off. And that means not picking up your... Um, phone and checking social media. I've, I've really stepped back from social media and I have specific times and days when I'm on social media. I don't tend to go there um, on my busiest days. So Monday and Tuesday, I don't tend to go to social media at all. I really haven't got time. So I just let it drop. When I'm taking those ba breaks to recharge my batteries, to clear my mind and come up with fresh ideas, it's because I'm out somewhere else. It's because I'm not involved in the the small, the little things that are business. I'm not sending receipts, you know, and invoices off to my bookkeeper, which I do on my phone. Um, you know, I'm not involved in this minuet, this tininess of the business and doing the little things. It's because I've gone for a big walk. Um, you know, it's I'm out and about. I'm taking that break. It might be I'm working in the garden because I find that's a break too. Um, I now have an outdoor bath. Um, I'll sit in the bath and do something else to come up with those fresh ideas. In the past, I have gone and stayed in a hotel up in the hills and they've got an incredible vista out of the rooms over, um, you know, Adelaide and over, depending which way you're looking, actually, you could be looking over Adelaide or you could be looking over the plains. And that really not only recharges my battery, but really sits me down to go, you're not doing invoices what you're doing is creating and what you're doing is developing your business for the way you want it to be because if you step back and think about what was your business like what did you sorry what did you want your business to be like so if you step back why did you start in this industry or any industry why did you start in your first job if this is like your third or fourth you know what was it that made you want to do this what was it that said to you, this is the thing for me. There's nothing else for me. This is it. I want to be there. I want to be able to help people. I want people who've got my problem to get help that is really specific for their needs. What was it that made you want to do it? So mine for nursing is a bit pathetic, really. The nurses at the hospital next door to my school, I, had, I walked through the hospital every morning to school and I walked through and oh, we got the bus home, but we in the morning, we would walk through and the nurses, they were in these amazing white uniforms and they had these little hats on their heads, these funny little, you know, 
things on their heads. I went, yeah. and they had this amazing white cape with a red stripe across the front. And um, I wanted the cape, you know, I wanted the cape anyway. So <laughs> there are some things that we look back on and we think that's not, you know, that might be it. But in actual fact, of course, for, you know, school, we had to do, um, you had to go out and do things for other people. And so we'd go to the hospital next door and we'd um, speak to the elderly people who were there and, you know, sit and help them with lunch and things like that. So what is that break for you that's going to enhance what you've done in the past May and make you think about new things and push you forward so that you don't burn out. The next one I was thinking about, so I've got, um, I, I brainstormed about five before I sat down and, you know, connecting with other entrepreneurs. Yep, you can do that with me um, because I have groups, you know, networking groups and networking events. So the retreat is coming up in November. And the page should be up on my site by now, by the time you listen to this. And so you have to connect with me really before you start, because there's no way you pay via PayPal and my Podia is all connected to Stripe uh, so that I keep that money totally separate and it's used solely for the retreat. And it means that, you know, we've got all of that money to spend on the retreat, basically. I'm in it for the love. I'm not in it for the profit for the retreat. Um, is that a good thing or a bad thing? A good thing for you, bad thing for me, I guess. But these networking events, something like that, is going to help you take that break and take you to the next level. It's going to help you make that leap. And um, it'll give you the inspiration, it'll give you the ideas from others and the feedback. So every Monday, so in I'm recording this on a Monday morning and in 50, 20 minutes, when I look at the clock, in 20 minutes, I have my graduate mastery program. And so that's a networking group because everybody gets to ask their questions. So they get to ask clinical questions as well as business questions. But where they are in their business means that the lunchtime group who all have lots of clients, they're all really busy. Yes, they have ups and downs. Totally, they have ups and downs. Um, but they have a lot of clients on board. They have a lot of knowledge. They've been in business that bit longer. And so the lunchtime group, when they're talking about their clients, it's just a diff slightly different system vibe, whatever. So my Mondays are all about networking and that really keeps me focused, it keeps me alive and it keeps me up to date. And being up to date and keeping on learning is one also of my um, conversation points for this podcast. By keeping ourselves up to date and the latest in the industry trends and techniques means we know what's out there. Now I do have a tendency to stick to just a couple of companies for the majority of the products that I give to my clients and that's for ease of learning. Um, the companies have been around a long time. I know what they have. I know their good quality but I do dip into other companies. I do dip into smaller companies. It depends what you need for your client, doesn't it? So we need to attend workshops but um, read blogs and read books and all of those things and do online courses but we have to remember that they are trade and we don't want to just get stuck in the trade model you know the company says you must use you know your client has PCOS therefore you must use this product this product this product in this system in in this way so I've never done that because I have always found that this company's got a really good um, licorice tablet, you know, with P and E and blah blah. But this company over here, they have a way better um, inositol product that I'm going to use, for example, and this, and so on and so forth. So I mix and match, um, staying within sort of half a dozen companies, yeah, maybe slightly more for some outlier products. But within those companies, I'm mixing and matching for my clients to give them the the perfect. Um, synergy of products for their problem so we do need to keep up to date we are going to hear their ideas but we need to be innovative as well so that we can stay ahead for our clients for our niche for the people that we are seeing um, another thing one of my five was to set aside some time for experimentation now this seems a bit odd i know but we need to experiment a little bit. So I've recently, I was going to move from Podia to Simplero and I wasn't really sure. And I've been using the Simplero, so I paid monthly. And I've had it for six months now. And I've decided, actually, 
I might as well just stick with Podia. It's easier to use, it's faster, and I don't have to pay extra for emails when I'm, because I like Flowdesk. I like sending my emails on Flowdesk. And I don't actually like sending emails. So having a system that I like and I can use easily makes it easier for me to send them. Where, you know, so if I'm sending them on a boring system, I don't tend to send them very much. Whereas if I send them on a pretty system, I'm going to send them more often. And that is the positive in that because otherwise I wouldn't achieve my end game, which is to send the email. So we do have to experiment. We do have to try out new ideas. Um, years ago, um, one of the podcasts way back when, I can't remember, is all about how I failed in business by going out into rooms. They were the wrong rooms. They were in the wrong place. It was the wrong to decide. The feng shui was wrong. Everything was wrong about it. Um, but it was an experiment. I lost a lot of money. It was a long time ago. I got to write it off against my business. But it also meant that I tried it and I've come back home. My clients were happier here. I'm happier here. And this is what works for me. And yet I know lots of people are desperate to work out and be somewhere else so that they're dedicating that time. So we're all very different, but we have to experiment in that way. It's okay to go out, have a room for, you know, six months and go, this isn't working. I need to stop. I mean, I did it for two years. But at a year and a half, I was so over it. I was just waiting for the lease to end and just paying money. So we have to, you know, we need to look at these things and make sure you've got an out where you need to have an out where you are experimenting. But it's really worth experimenting and knowing that it's okay to go, mm, this didn't work. This didn't work for me. It might work for somebody else, but it didn't work for me. And I have to stop now. I have to do something else. I have to quit this thing like I have with Simplero. I stopped it yesterday, actually. Um, and stick with Podia and my website. I have a really pretty website, which I'm, you know, I'm not hanging out on. And I need to work more with that website and with Google more. So, you know, I tried something new, hasn't fitted with me. I'm not getting the love from it that I'm not really, I mean, you know, do you get, ever get the love from, um, you know, online things? I don't think you do really when you've got to do the work. But the feel isn't there for me. There's no desire to go there, whereas I will still go to Podia and do all the things. So, you know, if it's an experiment, it's an experiment that hasn't worked for me. But Simplero works for tons of people and heaps of people absolutely love it. So don't diss it just because it hasn't worked for me. <clears throat> so what were my top five things? So we had take a break, make sure that you take a break, whether it be a day, um, I stop my day at five o'clock. Sometimes it's 5.30, sometimes it's six o'clock, I've got to say, and I do have late night for the academy. If you're in the academy, Monday is the late night because time zones, I've got to be available. But, you know, when I finish work on a Tuesday, actually, that's a lie, Monday and Tuesdays, I'm working late at the moment, but Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, if I sit down, that's it, five o'clock comes, I'm done. I turn off the computer, I put it away, I close it. Before, when I was doing my own social media, I would then go, okay, I've finished my work for the day. I will sit down in the evening while I'm watching TV and I will do some Canva because that was my time to play. And then as I got other people doing it, I would then be looking at what they've done in the Canva in the evening. But now I've incorporated that into my working hours. So I go through these things during my working hours. The next one, connect with other entrepreneurs, connect with other people like yourself, get a mentor, get into groups, book the focus call with me. Set a time aside for set aside time for experimentation um, so that you can decide. It doesn't have to be exp expensive experimentation like both of those were. It might just be doing something slightly differently. It might be um, using different scripts with your clients. It might be changing up just your room, experimenting with how you sit and the space that you're in. So experimentation can be free and mostly is free. Okay trying new things. So taking some risks. Um, oh, I haven't talked about that one yet. Here it is on my list. I haven't said about it. So try new things. Um, do something differently. Maybe experiment with new marketing strategy. Maybe um, have a revamp of all your branding colors or do something in a different way. Okay, because that can be the knock on to help you discover new opt new opportunities and ways to grow your business and do other things. All right. And finally, keep learning. Don't forget that learning comes in all forms from all formats. 
just like this podcast. And if, you didn't, if you've enjoyed this podcast today, then please rate and review. And know that at the end of the month, we do have a little competition. And so it's all about rate, you know, getting the reviews out and sharing the podcast with other practitioners. So to do that, you leave a review, you screenshot it, you pop it on your story and you tag me. And then there's a spreadsheet. And in the spreadsheet, you say, hey, here it is. I've done it on this date at this time and you'll get points. So we know who the winner is because it's on the spreadsheet. So I don't have to worry about any competition rules because you're putting yourselves in the competition and doing it. So I can't wait to spend more time with you um, in any of my groups, any of my formats, but just those five things. Check them out, see how you go. And I really look forward to catching up with you really soon. Tra for now. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe. 